Howdy folks and welcome to the Hillbilly Kitchen. Today we're making a pinto bean fritter. Now, this is another one of those really old recipes and you can change it and make it all different kind of ways. And of course, because this is a hillbilly kitchen, we're gonna give you a few different varieties. But for the basic recipe, you need some pinto beans. And I've got probably a cup and a half here, maybe a little bit more. It's about the contents of a can. So if you wanna do this all canned stuff, you can do it all canned straight out of your pantry. You have to have an egg that's gonna bind it. And you have to have either some sort of crumbs or some sort of ground grain. And what I'm using is I'm using a half a cup of cornmeal mix. You can use cornmeal mix. If you have leftover cornbread, you can crumble that up and make breadcrumbs out of it. You can make breadcrumbs out of crackers or you can buy commercial breadcrumbs, but you need about a half a cup. You can also use plain flour if you want to. But the cornmeal mix is a little cornmeal and a little flour, and it's got some leavening in it, baking powder and stuff like that. But like I said, you can use plain cornmeal or you can use leftover cornbread. And in fact, you can take all your leftovers from a fried tater dinner and turn it into a fritter. If you do fried taters and um, pinto beans for dinner, and like I cannot tell you how many times I have had just a sp few spoonfuls of beans and a few spoonfuls of taters and a few spoonfuls of corn, you can throw all that into this recipe and turn it into a fritter and have a meal with it. Just cut you up a cucumber and mater. Um, the only other thing that you have to have in the recipe is you have to have a little salt and pepper and I'm putting a little bit of chili powder in mine. You can also put cayenne pepper if you want it hotter. Um, some chopped up bell peppers and onions are great in it. If you don't want to put anything else in it, um, about a half cup each or so. You know how I measure my peppers and onions. You can add in about a half cup or so of cheese or you can use some cheese and sour cream to garnish it with. And like I said, you can add in corn and fried potatoes. If you got a little leftover from a dinner and you need another dinner, you just mix it all up as a fritter. And I got a feeling as times get harder, we're gonna need lots of these leftover fritter meals. <laughs> and you might need a little bit of milk or something to adjust the consistency with. It just kind of depends on how much liquid it is in your beans or your corn if you're putting in corn. Um, if you want to, you can put a little sour cream in your mix and adjust it with that. You could also use buttermilk or just whatever you've got. That's the great thing about fritters. It's what you got in a pan fried. So let's start mixing this up. And like I said, I got about a cup and a half or so of beans here. Um, you can use canned beans if you've got leftover beans where you've cooked a big pot. And even though I'm cooking for myself and I was just cooking for me and Brett, I like to put a pot of beans on and let them cook, especially in the winter time. They just make the house smell warm. And this is a good thing to do with some of those beans. You know, you can have your beans and your taters and then you can have um, some chili and then you can have some pinto bean fritters. So you don't have to just eat a giant pot of beans if you're making them for yourself. Now you do want to um, mash your beans up a little bit and I'm just using my old tater masher here to do that. And you can see here there ain't much liquid in my beans. You do want to drain your beans. Well, I guess you don't really have to. You could just use your bean juice instead of using milk. It's just kind of all what you want to do. Um, you can put any kind of peppers in them too. If you want some hotter peppers, put some hotter peppers. You don't have to use bell peppers. And you can use hotter spices or you can just use a little salt and pepper. Okay. Now, I'm going to kind of mix up the basic recipe, I think, for the video. Um, you do want to kind of beat your egg up a little bit. And the egg is what's going to bind it all together. So you kind of got to have the egg. Um, 
If you have an egg allergy though, I would certainly try them without an egg. And if you don't have no milk and you want a little extra protein in them, of course beans have a lot, you could just add two eggs to them to put a little more liquid in them. I mean, like I said, that's a great thing about fritters. You can do whatever you want to to them. All right. You could also make this recipe with a can of refried beans. And I'm going to go ahead and add in my cornmeal mix and my salt and pepper and chili powder and put in my peppers and onions and you want you know for this many about half a cup each or you could just use some onion powder you don't have to have these these are one of the optional things We are definitely going to need a little bit of milk in this batch. Um, and like I said, the milk is going to vary and it's going to depend on how much liquid is in your beans. But you can see that's a little too dry for a fritter right there. I'm going to start with a little less than a quarter cup, which looks like it might be about enough. Yep, that's about what I want there. We don't want them too soupy, but we want to be able to spoon them in the pan and have them stick together. Now the other things I've got here are some corn and some potatoes. And like I said, if you got leftover potatoes, you can throw them in here. If you don't have leftover potatoes, but you got the beans, you can maybe fry you some potatoes on the side to make this more of a meal. Um, you can top it with cheese or you can put the cheese in it. You can top it with sour cream or you could even put some sour cream in it. I am going to put about half a can of corn in here. Not so much for flavor, even though it will give it a lot of flavor. And I'm measuring it the same way I did the peppers and the onions. But for color, because with the beans, they're kind of reddish brown. And then I've got the peppers in there, all green and the yellow corn. It just makes it prettier. And I'm going to save my cheese and my sour cream for the top, I think. But that's up to you. Now the next thing we want to do is we want to get our skillet preheated. Um, you don't want to put these in a cold skillet. If you put them in a cold skillet, they're going to stick and turn into mush. And you're going to need a little bit of something to cook them in. Now you can cook them in butter, you can cook them in all bacon grease, you can cook them in all oil, you can cook them in shortening lard, whatever. It doesn't matter, they will fry in anything. If you want the flavor of the butter or the bacon grease, but you don't necessarily want all the cholesterol because you're trying to get healthy, you can put just a spoonful of bacon grease or butter or whatever and then add a healthier oil. Um, olive oil or grapeseed oil or something like that and it won't have all that cholesterol in it. And I've talked about grapeseed oil before and I know you have to buy the right kind of grapeseed oil and all that stuff but grapeseed oil has a lot of the omega-3s, it has omega-9s in it, it has a lot of the good fats in it and some fats are better than others, they're just better for you but you still get that wonderful bacon flavor, even with the grapeseed oil. And it's also a little easier to digest. Lots of folks have trouble digesting really fatty, oily foods. So that'll make it a little bit easier on your stomach. And I wanna start, mm, I wanna have a little bit of oil in this skillet cause I want these to fry. I'm gonna coat it I don't know, not quite a quarter of an inch, but I want to have, like I said, enough in there, a good, a good layer in there to start them cooking in. And I want to let that get good and hot. And I don't turn my pan on until after I've got everything mixed up because like all the other fritters and pancakes and stuff, they're going to come out much better if you let them sit a few minutes before you start actually frying them. 
So that's what I'm doing here. I'm letting this sit while my pan preheats. While our pan is preheating, I want to share 2 Peter 3, 9 with y'all. The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some men consider slackedness, but He is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. That is absolutely the most wonderful thing about our Savior. It does not matter where you are. It does not matter what you've done. He's waiting on you to come to Him, and He will meet you right where you are and save you. So if you are in a, a terrible, hopeless, lonely situation, reach out to God. Seek Jesus. And if you need help finding Him, you leave a comment, you send an email, somebody will get back to you, and we will do everything we can to help you find our Lord and Savior. Okay, let's test our pan with just a little bit here and see how it's a doing. Mm, it's not hot yet. Give it a little extra heat there to warm it up. That's the great thing about cast iron skillets, they don't melt. <laughs> it don't matter how high you turn the heat up. Okay, we got it sizzling pretty good now. We can go ahead and scoop these in here. How big you make them is kind of up to you like everything else. Um, I like mine about the size of like my pancakes, which is maybe half a cup per fritter. And you can measure them with a portioner or a, a scooper. You can get the little things. They look kind of like an ice cream scooper. They're what they use in cafeterias to scoop out food. And you can measure them all exact. But this is the hillbilly kitchen and we don't measure much out exact here. <laughs> I scoop them in the pan and how they come out is how they come out. You don't want to crowd them. You want to leave plenty of room for them to fry. Get lots of that bubbling oil all around them. And this size skillet and this size fritter, about three is what I can get in there. And, you know, it'll depend on the size of your skillet and the size of your fritters. If you're making them for yourself and you're not making too many, you might just have your little skillet out and, you know, just make a few. Because, like I said, you can take leftovers from your pinto bean dinner and throw everything in here, including the taters, and just make a fritter and have that for dinner. And a lot of people ask me, they've asked me about every kind of fritter I've ever made, do they freeze? Um, they will freeze, and you can also keep them in the refrigerator. They'll stay good in the refrigerator. These don't have any meat in them, so they'll last at least a week in the refrigerator. Just seal them up good and tight, you know, and put them in the refrigerator either in a baggie or in a bowl, whatever. It doesn't matter, but make sure you got them sealed up pretty tight so they don't get stale. And when I'm warming mine back up, I warm them up in my toaster. I'll just put them in the toaster and warm them up. So you don't have to turn on an oven or a toaster oven or get out a skillet or anything. Just the regular old toaster will heat them up. And I do that with pancakes too. <laughs> when you're cooking a denser fritter like this, it's a little bit different than a pancake. How you can tell when these need to be turned is you actually have little bubbles of grease that come up through the center of your fritter. And it almost looks like little bitty teeny tiny volcanoes or something coming up through the center. And I don't know if you can see it or not, but I've got one right there on this one. And there's a couple over here where the grease is actually kind of bubbling up through it. And that lets me know that it's time to turn this. And it's nice and brown on that side, but not burned. Ooh, that one looks even better. And that's what you want, nice and golden brown. Now, you can see like this side's nice and golden brown and this side's yeah, kind of brown. If you want to brown that even, once this side cooks, you can definitely flip it back over so that it's all the same color like this one right here. This is the prettiest one. But how this one is kind of darker here and lighter here, you can flip them back over and get them nice and even if you want to. Just turn that lighter side in toward the stove burner and you know, the darker side out toward the edge of the pan 
so you've got the lighter stuff next to the heat. It only takes about, oh, three to five minutes per side to cook these. Everything in them is kind of already cooked anyway, except for your egg and your onions and your peppers. Um, and you know, you can eat those, you can eat the onions and the peppers raw. The egg, it just takes a second to cook it. But three to five minutes per side, kind of depending on how brown you want them, gets them done for me. And you do want to drain them. See, both sides are nice and golden brown. I like to drain them on a rack because stuff like this, it's really crispy. If you put it on paper towels, it tends to make it soggy. So if you drain it on a rack, it will stay crisper. Um, and as you're cooking them, when you take one out, you want to add another one in. That maintains the temperature of your pan. If you take them all out at one time, then your pan is going to overheat. And then when you put your next round in, it's going to burn them. But if you take one out, put one in, take one out, put one in until you get them all cooked, you won't have any burned ones. And if you let them sit for just five to 15 minutes before you start cooking them, your very first one will look as good as your very last one. But if you don't let them sit after you mix them, then those first ones are going to tend to be kind of flat and kind of crumbly, and they're just not going to be as good. But you can see here what it looks like, oops, <laughs> drop it. When it's all done and it's done in the middle and they are nice and moist, um, they're crispy on the outside, moist on the inside. You can flavor them however you want and you can top them with, like I said, a little cheese or you can put that cheese in there and a tiny bit of sour cream. I've lost my spoon. or you can just pick them up and eat them just like they are. You don't have to put anything at all on them. They're good all by themselves. And this is gonna be one of those really good to get you through the shortages and hard times recipes. You can throw anything in it you want to pretty much. You can make it spicy, you can make it plain, you can make it basic. You can load it with your whole bean and tater dinner. Save this recipe, give it a try. Like I said, take one out, put one in. Super simple. Um, it's incredibly inexpensive. And if you're doing it with leftovers, you know, you got your one pot meal. You just mix it up in a bowl and then fry it in the pan. And for those of us who are cooking for ourselves or just cooking for one other person, it's a really really stretch your dollar meal. But even if you've got a family, you could do these as a side dish with a few leftovers from a big dinner and, you know, stretch your dollars. If you didn't have enough to do the whole dinner, it makes a great side dish. And they have a ton of flavor. Adjust your oil level in here too if you need to as you keep adding fritters if you know too much of your oil is getting soaked up just pour a little more in you do want to keep a good coating of oil in there so it has enough oil bubbling up to cook your fritters. And that's just about all I can tell you about making pinto bean fritters. So I want to thank y'all for joining us in the Hillbilly Kitchen again. Please don't forget to click like and subscribe before you leave. And until next time, remember to put God first.